Don't tell Tom. Don't tell Tom. You can tell almost everyone your mother's a hag, your father's a homo and dresses in drag, that your sister's like squaddies, she's a right old slag. But don't tell Tom. Don't tell Tom. Look, I've already told you I'm not going to tell him. Don't tell Tom. How many more times do I have to tell you I'm not going to tell him? You can tell almost everyone your mother's a drunk, your father's a fag and a queer and a punk, your sister's a scaghead and smokes too much skunk, but don't tell Tom. I've already told you I'm not going to tell him. I promise. How many more times? Don't tell Tom. I've told you a thousand times I'm not going to tell him. Don't tell Tom. I promise I won't tell him. You can smoke a fat joint or maybe a fag, go down the shops and buy a porno mag. But when push comes to shove, only a silly old slag would tell that stuff to Tom now, wouldn't they? I've already told you I'm not going to tell him, OK? Oh, Tom, guess what? <laughs> I'm Daddy's perfect princess, and I'm always good as gold. And there's always tweets and waffles in my lovely little world. There's been ponies, peonies, private school, and who am I to grouse? But we live in Lexington proper in a most capacious house. It's huge. But Daddy, I'm awakening. Oh, woe is me, alas, alack. A trip to town last winter's eve has left me with a secret black. I saw him near the Odeon. He flogged just by my foot. Then his roly he discarded as my dainty foot in flob I put. His earring flashed in gypsy style. His torso lean and wiry. In his sagging tracky bottoms I espied a bulge so fiery. All right, mate. Thus he greeted me. Good day, young sir, I bill and cooed. By such a handsome fella, I had never yet been wooed. I very nearly fainted, and I thought I'd need a stretcher when he took me firmly by the hand and said, All right, my name's Fletcher. <laughs> oh, he's Fletcher. Never was there such a man as Fletcher. He's my guiding star and my director. Oh, Fletcher. I love you, love you, love you, love you. Love you. Fletcher. He is my knight in armour, my protector. Never would I badger him or Hector. Oh, Fletcher. I love you, love you, love you, love you, woo. I love you, love you, love you, love you, woo. He took me up to Princeton, which to me was fairly novel, and to me his council dwelling was a palace, not a hovel. And he didn't have to grovel, even though I'm rather pussy, when he grabbed me by the pigtails and stole a kissy-wissy. Oh, he's Fletcher. In matters of the heart, he ought to lecture. He's my milk and honey and my nectar. Oh, Fletcher. I love you, love you, love you, love you all. Fletcher. He is my charming prince and grand elector. For a shrine to him we must find an erector. Oh, Fletcher. I love you, love you, love you, love you all. I'm in the Grinstead pussy now. And though I'm European, I like to do the patois of the gangster Caribbean. Shaggy in the house, or Carolina. Talk to the hand. Mm-hmm. But cos Daddy don't like Fletcher, and in him he see no merit, there's been threats to cut me money and threats to disinherit. But still, there's Fletcher. I mule and skank and bitch and hoe for Fletcher. I shake my big fat booty now for Fletcher. Drug selector. I what? I ain't saying this shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I've got a little obsession with pretty gates. 
So I'm just going to show you, I don't know if you've ever been to Briscape, but I'm just going to show a little video so you can get a taste of it because it's quite important for the next poem, which um, should be, yeah, which is the, well, is the fusionist section. Fusionist. I don't know how good the sound's going to be. Armageddon over Pretty Gate. So I'd have to show you a little bit of Pretty Gate so you could appreciate how it might, how it might appear if Armageddon were to book up. <coughs> I gets up in the morning and makes myself a milky tea. And though it may be early, the Daily Express arrives punctually. <sighs> I read about the immigrants. And Lady Thatcher's death, she'd sort it out, God bless her, all this mess. I shuffles to the parlour and gives me nets a twitch. Her opposite's asleep, the lazy bitch. She's an idle, scrounging, doly whore who sleeps till noon, who'll never budge to answer bailiffs at her door. But who am I to judge? What am I like? Yeah, it's a pretty gay kind of day. We're doing things the pretty gay way. Every day is the same, the pretty gay day. It's lunchtime and she's still not up, but I've got things to do. I find my head square, zimmer frame, the shopping trolley too. I trundles to the co-op, cause things won't buy themselves, and there's always treats are plenty on the shelves. Yeah, it's a pretty gay kind of day. And I'm doing things in a pretty gay way. Every day's the same. Pretty gay, boom! Except things weren't quite the same that day in Pretty Gate. 
North Korea had invaded out of fear of Pretty Gates Thatcherite tendencies. <laughs> now the red star of the East was in the ascendancy. A vast barbed wire fence had been erected round the perimeter, each blade sharp as a scimitar. A no man's land, a demilitarized zone had been declared between Pretty Gate and the rest of Colchester. Some people were even glad of it. Old bags on Zimmer frames, louts hanging round Ladbrokes, even the pub going proles were gunned down indiscriminately if they came too near the Pretty Gate wall. No, 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 it's no joke that Pretty Gate was under the socialistic yoke. This is serious stuff. From vast loudspeakers flowed martial music and the chilling sound of the new dictator of Pretty Gate. People of Pretty Gate, Kim Jong-un commands you all to lay down your arms, lay your guns aside, put down your weapon, citizen of Pretty Gate. Yes, life changed that day in Pretty Gate. There was no more stuffing themselves to obesity on delicacies from the co-op. <laughs> and no more pints at the pub. From now on, their sustenance would be the cold gruel of socialism, served at the canteen of the Socialist School of Hard Knocks. And no more slaggy tops from New Look. From now on, drab mouth suits would be their gulag garb. But as they toiled for free at the behest of their socialist masters, these capitalist dogs of Pretty Gate spies a new star in the night sky, bringing them hope. Shall we wish upon that star? Shall we? Yes, there's a new star in the sky tonight, not red, but tinged with royal blue, of tasteful capitalistic hue, a newborn star which shines so bright, lighting the dark of socialist night. And from that star, a warrior queen espies the dark and dreary scene, a Valkyrie of steely mien, quaffing her mead with great regret that the left is still not beaten yet. Is it Bodice here? No, it's Thatcher come to save us from the threat of North Korea. She'd seen off Argy's miners Kinnock, that lefty windbag Welshman Pillock, and from Valhalla she descends, the people of Pretty Gate to defend. Half a league, half a league, half a league at you. All towards Pretty Gate flies Lady Thatcher. Forward the Baroness, sort out this baleful mess. Towards the Pretty Gate flies Lady Thatcher. Koreans to the right of her, Koreans to the left of her, Koreans in front of her, men little in stature. Driving her Sherman tank, Kim Jong-un she will spank. Charging through Pretty Gate, make them all walk the plank comes Lady Thatcher with one vast swipe of her Marks and Spencer's nuclear handbag she sees off the socialist peril sending them a scuttle towards outlying areas I stand before you tonight in my red star chiffon gown my face softly made up and my fair hair gently waved the Iron Lady of the Western World as she ascends back to Valhalla, the people of Pretty Gate salvage a piano from the wreck of the charity shop. <laughs> and with some silly old queen leading the chorus, they sing as one, they rise as one to sing Psalm number 452 from the Methodist hymnal. Goodbye, Baroness. May you ever grow in our hearts. You were the grace that placed itself where lives were torn apart. You called out to our country, and you whispered to those in pain. Now you belong in Valhalla, and the stars spell out your name. And it seems to me that you lived your life like a baroness in the wind, never fading with the sunset when the rain set in. And your footsteps will always fall here, along Pretty Gate's greenest hills. Your candles burned out long before your legend ever will. Goodbye, Maggie, Baroness of Hearts. We love you. We love you. We love you, love you, love you, love you. We do.